Hey, this is Andrew Brown from ExamPro, and we're at the start of our journey asking the most important question first, which is what is the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals? So the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals is an entry-level Microsoft certification. It has no prerequisites, so you don't need to have any prior knowledge of the Power Platform components or the cloud to learn this specific course. This course covers the following key topics. Understanding the business value of Power Platform and its components such as Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. Identifying the capabilities and limitations of each Power Platform component. Understanding the Dataverse, formerly Common Data Service, and how data connectors and external services can be integrated. Creating basic Canvas and model-driven Power Apps. Creating and sharing Power BI dashboards and reports. Creating automated workflows using Power Automate. Understanding the use cases of Power Virtual Agents, and knowledge of the basics of AI and the Power Platform's AI Builder capabilities. So, who is this certification for? The certification is designed for individuals who are interested in learning how to leverage the Power Platform to streamline business processes, automate tasks, and create custom solutions. You may consider this certification if you are new to Power Platform and want to learn the fundamentals and benefits of Power Platform in general. You are a business user, administrator, developer, data analyst, or IT professional. You want to understand the capabilities of Power Platform, such as building basic business processes using Power Automate and Power Apps, and gain skills in data analysis with Power BI and creating chatbots with Power Virtual Agents. Or you are a senior Power Platform administrator or developer or in a related role who needs to reset or refresh their knowledge after working for multiple years. So now let's take a look at the Microsoft Power Platform certification roadmap to see where we would go after the Power Platform fundamentals and what kind of roles would be associated with those certifications. So at the start, you get your Microsoft Power Platform fundamentals, which is at the fundamental level. After that, we have the associate level certifications such as the Power Platform App Maker, Power Platform Functional Consultant, and Power Platform Developer. And we have an expert level certification called the Power Platform Solutions Architect. It's really up to you to choose which field you're interested in. A common route could be something like, if you're a developer and want to develop and secure Microsoft Power Platform Solutions, you could take the Power Platform Developer at the associate level and then move on to taking the Power Platform Solution Architect at the expert level. If your interest lies more towards data analysis, you could take the Power BI Data Analyst to maximize the value of data assets with advanced analytics, and eventually take the Azure Enterprise Data Analyst to build enterprise-scale data analytics solutions. If you're an IT professional or citizen developer, you could take the Power Platform App Maker to simplify and automate tasks and processes, then take the Power Platform Functional Consultant to extend and customize Microsoft apps and services, it's also common for people to take multiple of these associate level certifications. It doesn't have to be just one. This is to ensure they have a wide range of knowledge on all of these areas for possible career openings. Another route you can take is the Dynamics 365 certifications, which is a suite of enterprise resource planning and customer relationship management applications. It specializes in helping businesses manage and streamline their financials, operations, sales, marketing, customer service, and human resources procedures. Also, if you have an interest in cloud computing, you can explore options such as the Azure Administrator and Azure Developer. From there, you could take the Azure Solutions Architect or DevOps Engineer at the expert level. So, as you can see, there are many possible paths to take, and these are not all the ones available on the list. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide what you want to specialize in. Keep in mind that there is no single perfect route. These suggestions are simply intended to provide some guidance and help you make your own choice. So, how long is it going to take to pass this certification? Well, it's going to really depend on your background. But if we had to generalize it, we can look at it as kind of a scale, and so if you are at the beginner level, you're looking at roughly 16 hours. And when we say beginner, we're saying someone that has never used Microsoft Power Platform products like Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, etc. Someone that has never used Microsoft Azure or any cloud provider, or someone that has no tech background or experience. And when we're looking at the other side of the spectrum, which is someone that is experienced, we're looking at somebody who can watch this at 1.5 to 2 times speed and are able to absorb this information very quickly. So they have practical working experience with the Power Platform products and is familiar with using them. They have experience with Microsoft Azure or any cloud provider like Amazon Web Services or GCP, so they can easily translate that knowledge.
or they have a strong background in technology where they've worked in the industry for many years. And so you know their study time is going to be a lot shorter at seven hours or less. And so on average, most people are going to take about 12 hours to study for this course. And when we talk about the kind of stuff you'll be doing, it's going to be 50% lecture and labs, and we call them follow alongs, where the idea is you follow along in your own account. And then other 50% is the practice exams. So if you look at the length of the content, which is around three hours, then you know you should spend as much time doing practice exams to pass. And the recommended time to study is about one to two hours a day for roughly 10 days. So what kind of effort are we going to have to put in to pass the exam? Well, you have to watch the lecture videos and memorize key information. You'll need to do hands-on labs and follow along with your own account. Although as a fundamental certification, the certification is not very heavy on hands-on material, but it will provide a much greater understanding of the topics you'll need to know for the exam. And you will need paid online practice exams that simulate the real exam. And the last two here were things that I used to never suggest because you could literally just watch the videos and pass. However, Microsoft has recently updated this exam, so it's a bit more difficult. And so for these last two points, you do have to do these two things. For the paid online practice exams, that can be hard for some people. So I've made it easier for you by providing you with a full free practice exam on exampro.co slash pl-900. And so you just have to sign up with no credit card required and you'll get a full set of questions that simulate the real exam. So for the contents of the exam, the certification exam consists of six domains, each with its own weightage that determines the number of questions from that domain that will appear. So for domain one, which is business value of Microsoft Power Platform, we're looking at 20 to 25%. For domain two, identify foundational components of Microsoft Power Platform, we should expect 10 to 15% of the questions from there. For domain three, the capabilities of Power BI, we're sitting at around 10 to 15% of the questions. For domain four, the capabilities of Power Apps, we have roughly 20 to 25% of the questions. For domain five, capabilities of Power Automate, it's about 15 to 20% of the questions. And for domain six are the complementary Microsoft Power Platform solutions, which include Power Virtual Agents and Power Pages, it's about 15 to 20% of the questions. Overall, the exam is mostly well balanced and evenly distributed across all six domains, so you won't be faced with an excessive amount of questions from a particular domain that may not be your strong suit. So where do you take the exam? Well, you can take the exam at an in-person test center or online from the convenience of your own home. Microsoft is partnered with the test center network Pearson View, and it offers in-person or online, and these exams are proctored, meaning there is somebody watching you to ensure that you are not cheating. In order to pass the exam, you have to score 700 points out of 1,000, and so 700 generally equates to 70%, but it's around 70% because Microsoft uses scaled scoring. This means that they could adjust it based on how many people are passing or failing, so always aim to get higher than 70%. The exam contains about 40 to 45 questions, so you can afford to get roughly 10 to 12 questions wrong. There is no penalty for wrong questions, such as minus one, so you should always choose an answer. And the questions come in a few formats. Multiple choice, multiple answer, drag and drop, and yes or no questions. The duration of the exam is one hour or 60 minutes. So you have a little more than one minute per question. The exam time is 60 minutes, but the seat time is 90 minutes. Seat time refers to the amount of time to review instructions, show the online proctor your workspace, read and accept NDA, and complete the exam and provide feedback. And when you do pass the exam, the exam is valid forever. Microsoft's fundamental level exams do not expire and you do not need to do a recertification. So that about covers the introduction of the course.